coaches on the Olympic teams for Brazil. He's a, just an awesome guy. And he's kind of taken me under his wings and, and said, you know, because he predominantly actually works with women with breast cancer. He's got a, he's got a, a government study and he's working, you know, he's got a whole program. But he's been taking me either in the mornings or the afternoons prior to me going on vacation. And, you know, four or five days a week, these are the goals. This is where we're trying to get to. And, you know, we're up to, you know, we got up to where we were doing like three and a half, four miles, you know, three or four times a week. And uh, as far as walking in the heat of the day and lifting and exercising and stuff. So, uh, but I do, I feel good. I, I actually, you know, I, I think every week and the more that I exercise, the better I actually feel. You know, the worst I've felt in the last three or four months was the was four or five days when I became a couch potato on vacation and just sat around and didn't do anything. You know? Butch, uh, this situation with the NBA ref, I really haven't. Okay, there's an NBA ref that has been implicated in a point of shaving scandal, betting scandal. Does it scare you that, that, um, that the officiating in football and basketball could be taken into the coaches worry about that? You know what, it's one of the things that I don't think that I've ever actually even thought of. I mean, I've known personally a lot of officials, both collegiately and in the NFL and I, I mean, I think their integrity, their love for the game, you know, I would be, I would be horribly disappointed and shocked if, you know, if that was, was the situation. I don't think that I can ever say with any kind of, you know, honesty that I ever thought that somebody had a vendetta or that they might have been gambling. I just, you know, and maybe that's my own naive approach, but I just never have ever thought, I mean, I just think that all the guys I've ever been around, they just, you know, they love the game of football and they and they have been very, very honest. When you take over a team that somebody else has recruited, um, obviously these are not players you've recruited yourselves, so you're stepping into a situation where you have a, a team that you haven't recruited. What, what were the strengths that you found on the team that you were left, and what were the weaknesses that you found on the team that you were left? Well, I think the strengths of the football team, ironically, it's, it's one of the most unique situations of all the restorations I've ever been involved in. Ironically, one of the strengths is both in the offensive and defensive line. Not only is a significant amount of the most talented players that we have on the team in those two areas, but also the most depth. Uh, you know, we've got, you know, maybe as many as seven, eight, nine offensive linemen that we think have an opportunity to become really good football players, and most of them are very young. And the same could be said about the defensive line, with the exception of the fact that the defensive linemen, uh, you know, there's there's a couple of seniors in that group. Kentron Balmer, Haile Taylor, uh, Kendreas Guy are all pre-seniors. I'd love for those guys to be juniors and have two more years, but, but that's really, the, the you know, probably the most depth and the best part of the team. Probably the biggest weakness is the fact of the inexperience of this football team. Kevin was telling me the other day that we have 84 players in scholarship right now, and I think 51 of them have never played in a college football game. And that's that in and of itself is is enough to keep you awake at night. Uh, you know, I haven't slept very good since Kevin told me that, but uh, you know, but it, it is what it is. I mean, you. you it, you know, with only 10 seniors in the football team, you knew it was going to be a young and inexperienced football team, which in some respects I think is good because a lot of the lessons that we're going to learn this year and a lot of the things that you, you would like to do as an incoming coaching staff, the, all of the things that we do is going to impact this football team. They're going to get to use that for two or three years as opposed to having 20, 23 seniors. And six months later, all the hard work gets out the door. So I, I'm actually okay with the fact, you know, that it's a Does it make the rebuilding job easier that the strengths are on the offensive line and defensive line because those are the two areas where it's the most difficult to build depth? And well, it, it, it's one, offensive and defensive line is one of the most difficult things to go out and recruit. And, and it generally takes both of those positions the longest to develop. Uh, you know, as freshmen coming in, most of the time, I think this is probably a pretty general consensus, is, is that skilled athletes have the best opportunity to, ha to help a football team early, a wide receiver, maybe a defensive back, maybe a running back, be just because of the physical nature of, you know, of being at those positions where a freshman offensive lineman, it's, it's awfully hard for them, or a freshman defensive lineman. 
And uh, so if you were going to inherit, that's probably where you'd like to inherit some help. So in that in, in that particular way of saying it, is you're pretty happy about what sure. you're inheriting oh, absolutely. In, in, that way. in those areas. We can, and they've they've worked extraordinarily hard. I mean, they've been they've been leaders. Uh, you know, they've they've been motivators. And I and I think that they sense that there's there, there's a sense of responsibility in those two groups to help us. But I don't know that it was, you know, I mean, I think that we will have some freshmen that will play. I don't know exactly how many of them. Uh, it's conceivable as many as maybe a dozen could play, maybe as few as seven or eight of them. Four of them clearly are going to probably play, or at least three of them, because they came in midterm. Uh, Juan Sturvick, Bruce Carter, and Zach Pinalto having come in and gone through spring practice gives them a huge edge over a lot of the other incoming freshmen. But I could see, you know, another half a dozen to seven or eight of the incoming freshmen initially probably on special teams, maybe in some specific roles that you target. Uh, nickel packages, maybe in the secondary, maybe in the, in the, on the offense. Uh, you know, and then as the season progresses, as they are able to help you more, maybe they take a, a larger role to help your football team. Is Coach outside early? Uh, is playing guys early in the manager I think it's an advantage. I mean, I've just always believed in playing players early. I mean, every place, you know, when I was the head coach in Miami, I mean, we routinely, some out of necessity because of the sanctions and the probation, but a lot of times just out of, out of their sheer athletic ability and their talent gave them an opportunity. And I think that, you know, we look at it from a from a – how much will this player actually truly get an opportunity to play? You know, if we're going to have 1,200 snaps on offense and defense during the course of the season, and you've got a freshman that could conceivably play 250 to 400 plays during the course of the season, think how much more he's going to be able to help. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. How much, how much better prepared he's going to be the following year? And uh, so, you know, and, 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 and Richard and kids – as we've talked about with the offensive and defensive line, a lot of times they need, you know, they just physically are not ready to play as 18-year-old freshmen. Uh, so some of those guys, it's a no brainer. Coach, outside the larger room. I'm sure I'm asking you to repeat yourself, too, and I apologize for that. Can you just talk about from your firing this the now going in the club, what's it like for you just personally being back in this pitch? Well, uh, I mean, it, it's been great. I mean, I've enjoyed it. Uh, you know, when, when, you, when you don't do something or you're not able to do something that you love with a passion, you really miss it. And, you know, like, I, I can tell you that honestly, I got into coaching as a high school football coach in 1975 because you love making a difference in kids' lives. I mean, that, for no other reason. You didn't get into it for the money, the notoriety. I mean, I, you know, when I first started coaching, I thought I'd be a high school coach. My father did one for 20-plus years. I thought I, that's probably what I would do is you know, teach science and, and coach football. And, uh, and when you're not doing that, you really miss it. You miss the camaraderie, the, the esprit de corps of going to the office and meeting with the staff and going and sitting in the locker room and talking to players. And, and those are the things that you miss. And, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be back doing it. Do you think you're passing?